So the Korean War is known in the history books as the Forgotten War, and it's largely because it's sort of sandwiched smack dab in between the Good War and the Bad War. 38,000 American lives were lost in a three-year struggle of, of, of really epic proportions in terms of brutality and casualties took place. So this is sobbing orphans of war. And this is a great reminder of the impact of the war on the civilians of Korea. We estimate, and these are, are very rough estimates, but we estimate that about three million civilians are killed in the fight in the Korean War. Sometimes I see the number as high as, as four million. Um, that's about 10% of the Korean population, which was about 30 million at the start of the war. So think about that. 10% of the, of the civilian population killed during the war. So this is new enemy faces in Korea. And I think in the entire display, it's the only photograph that has the Chinese picture. Now, the Chinese played a prominent part in the war. They intervened in late 1950 to support their North Korean allies and drove the United States forces all the way back below the 38th parallel. In late 1950, when the Chinese Communists entered the war and they blunted the American offensive and were driving them back to South Korea, a group of American soldiers were trapped in the North. They fought their way through and then to try to escape uh, the Chinese and the North Korean offensive, which had them surrounded, they headed for a port city in North Korea called Hongnam. Along the way, word spread that the American military was planning an evacuation of these soldiers. So North Korean civilians, also trying to escape from the Chinese Communist offensive, all started heading to Hongnam. In the end, about 100,000 American soldiers and 100,000 North Korean refugees descended on this small port city right around Christmas 1950. And in what they called Operation Christmas Cargo, what we sometimes call it the Christmas Miracle, the American Navy, which at this point was pretty small in the area, and so it was largely merchant marine ships, came in and rescued all 200,000 of these people and took them down south where they would be safe. And what was really the most amazing part of this is one ship, one of the last ships, called the SS Meredith Victory. The SS Meredith Victory was configured to hold about 60 people. There were still 14,000 refugees left waiting for safe transport. So the captain, acting on his own authority, completely stripped his ship bare. They threw supplies, they threw weapons, they threw everything over the side to make room. And they crammed, unbelievably, all 14,000 people onto the ship that was designed to carry 60. And for three days, the ship steamed south. It was so cramped that nobody could move. You couldn't lie down or sit down. It was completely shoulder to shoulder. And yet, all 14,000 survived. In fact, not only did they all survive, but five children were born on the three-day trip. This is the Taedong River Bridge photo. Um, and it's taken in December 1950, and it won the Pulitzer Prize in 1951. Uh, Desfor actually didn't think this was his best photo from the war, but he was happy, obviously, that it won. The photo was taken in December 1950 when the Chinese Communist forces are pouring towards Pyongyang and driving American forces back, and everybody is evacuating across the Taedong River just south of Pyongyang trying to escape the oncoming communists. So Desfor is on the southern shore taking these photos, but they're desperately trying to flee south to avoid the Chinese communists themselves. And I remember Desfor commenting how the most striking thing from the photo was the silence, how no one said a word as they were desperately trying to carry all of their possessions and make it across the bridge um, and avoid the um, violence that was coming. So this is reaching up from a snowy grave. And it may be the most famous photo from the war, uh, even more so than the one that Desfor won the Pulitzer Prize for. And you can see why. It's this incredibly powerful image of someone who had been killed and was struggling to get out um, with his hands here and, and a mouth where he was trying to breathe. What Des Ford didn't know was that when the Marines went through and, and dug up the area, they found a mass grave of about 100 uh, women, men, women, and children who'd been shot, hands tied together, and then buried, and the snow just fell on top of them while they struggled for those last breaths of air. So the impact of the war on the civilian population is something that these photographs remind us we can never forget.